Math 31, welcome to this not at all intimidating box about horizontal and slant asymptotes. So I'm gonna read all of this to you, and then we're gonna try and unpack it in example three. So we've got our same deal, we've got our rational function p over q, and we've got any real number, we're gonna call it b this time. All right, if your function is headed to b, right, your y values are headed to b as x goes to negative infinity, then y equals b is a horizontal asymptote. And if your function heads to b, some number, right, any real number b as x goes to positive infinity, then y equals b is also a horizontal asymptote. So I want us to think about this, okay? Let me draw a nice little function, x, y. Let's put b right here. And I'm gonna put a little line here. All right, so this is y equals b. Oop, you can't really see that. I went right over the box, so we'll go y equals b. All right, now, I want us to think about what it means as, as x goes to negative infinity and x goes to positive infinity. What direction am I headed? Up, down, left, or right? Well, if we're talking about x's, that's always left or right, and if it's negative infinity, we're sp specifically talking about left. So as I head left, my function is going towards some horizontal line. Or potentially, as x goes to infinity, which is x going right, as I go right, my equation is going towards some line. When that's the case, we've got horizontal asymptotes. And because horizontal asymptotes are lines, and they're horizontal lines, they're gonna have the equation y is equal to a number. All right, and this is one option for end behavior. And I wanna reiterate, I'm gonna go back to our trait table, because like I said, this thing is gonna be super important. If we're on rational functions, all right, and I can't get this all in one view screen, so I want you to see I'm in this column, all right, but I wanna go over to end behavior, all right. When I'm talking about end behavior, I will either have arrows or a horizontal asymptote, y equaling some number, or I might have a slant asymptote, y equaling mx plus b. And I'm gonna show you in this example how to distinguish, are you in this case, this case, or this case? All right, so we're gonna try and make sense of that. But those are your three options, and you can't have more than one of those options. It's either a slant, or it's a horizontal, or it's arrows, all right? It can't be some of each. All right, so with that, let's keep reading on this, all right? So the horizontal asymptote of a rational function can be determined by looking at the degrees of the numerator and denominator. So since we have a polynomial in the numerator, and a polynomial in the denominator. There's a leading term in the numerator and a leading term in the denominator. And those are gonna wind up being the only terms I really care about in terms of answering this question of end behavior. All right, so here are three cases. There are four overall, but we're gonna look at three of them right now. If the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, you're going to have a horizontal asymptote at the line y equals zero. So if you want, you can call this case one, okay? If the degree of your numerator is equal to the degree in your denominator, you will have a horizontal asymptote at the ratio of the leading coefficients. So I'll call that case two. Now, you will still have a horizontal asymptote. So again, your horizontal asymptote will be the line y equaling a number. It won't be zero this time. It will be the ratio of the leading coefficients. There will also come a time when the degree of your numerator is greater than the degree of your denominator by exactly one. And if that's the situation, you don't have a horizontal asymptote, you actually have a slant asymptote. So this is gonna be case three. And how you will get your slant asymptote equation of y equaling mx plus b, you're gonna use polynomial long division like we did back in section 5.4, okay? And again, these are only three of the cases. We haven't even gotten to the arrows case, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. So sometimes horizontal and slant asymptotes are referred to as end behavior asymptotes. So if you hear that phrase, great, they're talking about horizontal or slants. And again, you can't have both, it's one or the other. So this idea falls under the larger end behavior umbrella, which also includes the arrows we discussed in section 5.2. All right, so I know this seems like a lot, and I'm gonna do case one, case two, case three. And I want you to look at example three. So I'm gonna scooch this up so hopefully we can keep the cases in our view and the examples in our view. Okay, so taking a look at that, 
All right, we're gonna identify horizontal or slants. Again, you can't have both. So for each rational function, find the horizontal asymptote, right? Or I should, I could even say, find uh, the end behavior asymptote. So let, let's figure out what cases we're working with here. All right, so I need to figure out the degree in the numerator and the degree in the denominator, regardless of which case we're on. So I think you'll give me that the degree in this numerator is one, and the degree in the denominator here is also one. All right, the degree in this numerator is one, and the degree in this denominator is two. Um, the degree, oops, let me put a capital. The degree in this numerator is zero, and I say zero because this is a constant. It has no x values in it, so we've got degree zero. Um, and the degree in this denominator is two. All right, so let's think about what kind of relationship we have between the degree in the numerator and the denominator. Is this case one, case two, or case three? Well, let's figure this out. Is the degree of the numerator less than the degree of the denominator? No. Let's see if it's case two. Is the degree of the numerator equal to the degree in the denominator? That's true. So I wanna put here that we know the degree in the numerator is equal to the degree in the denominator, right? We would say, I could say this was case two. And these cases aren't official, they're just the order I happen to put them in. But when that's the case, we have a horizontal asymptote. So I'm gonna write HA, it's gonna be Y is equal to a number. All right, what is that number? It's the ratio of the leading coefficients. So if I look at my leading coefficients, well here is my leading term of X and my other leading term of X and the coefficients in front of them are one and one respectively. So let me find my eraser, Oop, found it. So this would be the ratio of one over one, which is just one. So that means my horizontal asymptote is basically the line y equals x. Not y equals x, oh my gosh, y equals one. All right. And I think we can see that. Let me move that up just a bit. Okay, so we've got the horizontal asymptote of y equaling one. And let me show you what this would look like on your calculator. We actually had this function graphed. That was the last one I graphed from example two. If I hit y, if I hit graph, maybe you see it, maybe you don't, but there is a horizontal boundary line. If I tack in y equaling one, you can see that horizontal boundary line going through there. Okay, all right, so with that, I wanna scooch my paper back down so I can see all three cases, and let's see what we're working with for example two, or excuse me, example two B, three B, I can count, I'm good at math. Okay, here we go. So let's see what we have here. I have the degree in the numerator is one, the degree in the denominator is two. All right, let's see what case we are in. Is the degree in the numerator less than the degree in the denominator? Um, yes, it is. So for this, I know the degree in the numerator is strictly less than the degree in the denominator, which means I have a horizontal asymptote at y equaling zero. I automatically get to put in y equaling zero, don't have to worry about it. And, and the reason behind that, I'm gonna scooch this up just so we can start to see. I wanna show you another way of looking at end behavior. All right, when we were looking at this, do I have enough? No, you know what, let me scoot it up just a little bit more so we can really talk about this. Let's go back to example one. And again, this part's extra from here on in. If we're looking at f of x equaling x plus four over x plus six, I really only care about these lead terms so that's basically like saying x over x, which is just one. Over here for part b, when you look at your lead terms, right, it's basically saying x over x squared, which is like saying one over x. And the thing is, if you're talking about end behavior, right, end behavior we talk about as x goes to negative infinity, and as x goes to positive infinity, right? End behavior. Well, I want you to think about what happens to fractions when these denominators get really big, right? What is one over infinity? Well, when I was young, to me, infinity seemed like a million. That just seemed like the most amount of money I could ever, ever hope to have, right? I mean, that's back when houses cost like 30,000 a year, not a year total. 
But so think about one over a million, one over a really large number. If I went up to you and I said, hey, I'm gonna give you one over a million dollars, like one over a really large number. If I was gonna give you one over a million dollars, what am I basically giving you? Zero dollars, right? So when you have denominators, or I should say when you have fractions, where the denominator is really, really, really large, that fraction is basically zero. And that's what's happening here. By the time we look at the lead terms, you've got an x over an x squared, so you really have an extra factor of x in this denominator, which is gonna zero out the fraction. Okay, so I'm gonna scooch this back down. We're gonna figure out the case that we're on for part, or part C. All right, so taking a look at this, this says degree in the numerator is zero, degree in the denominator is two. All right, so is the degree in the numerator less than the degree in the denominator? It is. And because of that, I know again, I'll have a horizontal asymptote at y being equal to zero. All right, so we had a case two, and then we had a couple, oops, case ones. So we're gonna take these ideas and we're gonna practice them a little bit more so that you can see the other cases play out. All right, so I will catch you on example four when we're gonna find all sorts of asymptotes. I'll see you in a bit. Bye.